Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome back for another card video. Today I've got a great way to add color to black cardstock. I'm using these Chocola markers. They're chalk in a pen form, like a liquid chalk. Uh, they come in these beautiful bright colors and they color kind of like a paint pen. And I'll show you the tip here. Um, they're really made for non-porous surfaces, glass, um, plastic, whiteboards, um, and so when you color them on paper, which is a porous surface, it's still opaque, but it's permanent. So on the non-porous surfaces, it comes off with just a wipe. Um, I'll show you how it works here on the plastic. You can, get, you can see how great this line is. It's nice and clear and crisp and, and it doesn't break up at all. And then of course it comes off because it's water soluble, it comes off with a wipe. So I'm grabbing a baby wipe here so I can show you how it just wipes right off. But um, on the paper it actually is permanent and very opaque. So you get this really bright vibrant colors on the black cardstock. I'm going to be using the Garden and Bloom set by Stampin' Up. I'm going to have the two flowers, the big one and the small one. They're just the outlines that I'm going to use. And I'm going to start off with my embossing body. It's just a static pack to make sure that you don't have any stray embossing powder. It doesn't stick where you don't want it. And I'm going to be doing a lot of white embossing on black cardstock to make these flowers pop before I even apply the color. So I'm going to take my flower and I'm going to ink it up with some Versamark ink. It's just a clear sticky ink. And I'm going to randomly put these flowers on both corners here. I'm going to do them one at a time. So I'll put my white embossing powder on it and then I'll heat it to set it. And then I've already cut a uh, mask out of post-it. So I just stamped it on a post-it and cut it out with a scissor and I'll place it right over there so I can make these next flowers appear um, as if they're in the background. So then I'll sprinkle some white powder on these. I'll do both of these at the same time and then I'll heat it to set it and then I'm going to start working on the upper right hand corner just stamping a couple there using my mask to get one behind the other and then I'll take my smaller flower and I'm just going to randomly stamp it with a nice kind of even spread. I think I used three on each side. So I put a couple behind um, using my mask and then I'll do three more in the upper right hand corner and then I'm going to sprinkle my powder on that and, uh, and heat set it. I decided to go ahead and add my sentiment next because I didn't want to mess up the sentiment after I did all the coloring so I figured I might as well mess it up beforehand if I'm going to mess it up. But it's okay, it turned out just fine. I used the embossing buddy again on my cardstock before I did the sentiment to make sure that it was nice and crisp and clean. Alright, now it's time for the coloring. Um, you can see that the tip, as I said earlier, looks very much like a paint pen and it colors like a paint pen. Um, it is pretty thick so it's not really for detail. Uh, I'm coloring around the embossing here because if you do get the chalk on the embossing portions, it does come off but I found that I had a hard time getting it off the embossed without affecting the chalk that was already laid down on my cardstock. As you can see, I'm getting great results with just one layer of this chalk marker. You could actually add another layer to get thicker, brighter, more opaque results. Uh, this marker dries really super quickly, so almost by the time you finish one petal and start on the next petal, it's almost dry. Now to get more paint out of the marker, you just have to press down. So press down like you do with a normal paint pen and the ink starts to run out quicker. The cardstock I'm using here is just regular old Stampin' Up! black cardstock. I didn't have any issues with pilling of the paper even though this is water-based. Uh, it just gave me a really nice smooth layer of color. I was really happy with the way it came out. Now you can leave it just like this with the pink and the black. It's really pretty. I decided to add another color. So I'm going to grab my yellow and I'm going to put some on my craft mat. Now remember this dries really quickly so I'm going to have to continually add this yellow to my craft mat. I decided to first apply it with a dry brush and you can see I'm having a little bit of trouble because everything is so dry. Uh, once I got quite a bit of yellow on my brush, it started to get easier. So my thought was maybe I just need a little bit of moisture on my brush. So what I ended up doing was dipping my brush, I'm doing that right now, into a glass of water. And then I didn't want it to be wet because it really dilutes the chalk. So I'm going to wipe it onto a tissue to get most of the water off. So really what I'm ending up with here is a moist brush. So not a wet one, but a moist one. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some more yellow and put it down on my craft mat and I'm not going to add any more water to my brush. It's already moist so I'm just going to pick it up and I'm going to put it right there on my flower. 
Now I did experiment with taking the marker directly to the pink, so putting the yellow on top of the pink. Uh, it, but it contaminated the yellow and it did come off with quite a bit of extra writing on a scratch sheet of paper to kind of wipe it off my, my tip. And so I wasn't really happy with that and decided that I didn't want to do that again. So I ended up deciding to just go ahead and use a brush to apply the color on top. And it was pre pretty easy to do. I'm going to quickly finish up this last petal here and then I'm going to work on my flower center. I wanted it to be yellow but I didn't want it to be that bright yellow so remember I talked about how these colors will mute with water so I just added a bunch of water to get a toned down version of this yellow and then I tapped it in. You can see the more chalk you add the brighter it gets. I, didn't, I thought that was a little too much so I just grabbed a tissue and I wiped it up and I started over which is easy to do as long as you do it before it dries and when you have water in there it takes a little bit longer to dry. So I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to tap it in until I get it just the right shade. And when that's done, I'm going to go ahead and finish up the rest of my flowers. I'm going to do them the exact same way. You could color all of them pink and then go back in and add the yellow. That would work just fine. You don't have to do it one flower at a time because the pink dries almost immediately. So it's going to be dry whether you wait 30 seconds or 10 minutes. It didn't take me 10 minutes, by the way. <laughs> it really goes very quickly because I'm coloring the whole thing. I'm not worrying too much about the shading. For my little ones, I'm going to color them purple. So you can see this purple is just a fantastic color. I just can't believe how bright these colors are on the black cardstock. So again, I'm just not worrying too much about the color. I'm just filling in all the areas with purple. And then for these, I'm going to add a little bit of a white accent. And I'm going to do one side and then I'll do the other side, meaning the corners. So I'm going to take some white and put it on my craft mat, just like I did with the yellow. And I found also a little tip here is if you drop the color in in a giant ball, it dries uh, a little slower than if you kind of spread it out on your craft mat. So kind of get it into a big pile I guess if you will. Anyway, so I took a smaller brush and I just feathered it outward from the center just picking up a little bit at a time and I'm going to do this with all three flowers so nothing too fancy I'm just sort of being a little messy with it again because these stamps are pretty sketchy so it kind of has that feel to it already and then as you as it dries you'll be able to see if it fades at all because it is on top of purple and white on top of purple is going to mute the white a little bit so I went back and added a couple of more lines of white here and there and then I'm going to work on the upper right hand corner. I'm going to do the same exact thing to those three flowers up there. So here is the finished card. I so love this card so much. It's just so vibrant. Um, and you get such contrast with the black cardstock. It's really pretty. So I'm going to put some ATG tape runner on the back of this and I'll grab my Misty to make sure I line it up on my card base, which is just four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'll put it in the lower corner and then I'll also put my panel in the lower corner. And once it hits the corner, I'll just press down. Now I also wanted to show you, these are chalk markers, so you would think it would be chalky, like a chalky residue, but you can see I can rub my finger and I'm going to rub it into the black area. You can see that nothing is coming off, so when it dries, it truly is dry and permanent. I decided to round the corners. I'm using my corner chopper, which I really haven't used that much. I've had this thing for forever. Um, there's a half inch size and a quarter inch size, and I'm going to use a half inch, so a little bit bigger rounded corner there, just to add a little bit of interest to my card. And then this sentiment actually has two parts to it in this set. It comes with the flowers in this garden set. And I'm going to stamp the other part of the sentiment on the inside. So on the outside, we have, hope you're feeling special today. And then on the inside, because that's just what you are. It's a cute sentiment. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed that card, this new product that I just got. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.